it has been more than a year since Gaius uh, release and he has been regarded as one of the best espers to ever been released when he was released he was completely overpowered doing no units in the game can do he does the best he is one of the best aoe dps in the game he has aoe strip aoe buff block aoe sear 100% accuracy 100% crit and he resets on every single wave for his uh, transformation so he's a perfect wave clearing unit as well so in this video i'm going to showcase Gaius in various different contents and see how he fares. The first one is going to be Kronos. This is going to be my team. This is the place that he is effect affected the most because of the shift that the game is going towards. Before 3.1.7, if you guys are new and didn't play during that update, before 3.1.7, Ritual Miracle is just trying to get the fastest possible time and it's not about turn count at all. But after that, they introduced turn count and leaderboard contents like the ultimate spire and then it became a competition on who can get the lowest turn count so that one Gaius took a pretty big hit but he was still the best um, wave clearer for Kronos but then Leora re released and he basically is phased out of ultimate spire ranking because he takes one extra turn to clear the wave Whereas Leora can clear it within one wave, right? So this is the biggest content that he's uh, affected on where the game went from time limit in, uh, to turn count. That way, he is basically new turn in a way. 14 turns, not bad, but if you go to the ranking, this team is around 11 to 14 turns. But if you go take a look at the ranking, yeah, 12.6 is not even in the top um, 50 because everyone is using a Leora instead of Gaius. The 3 turns that Leora provides over Gaius is just way too much for you to try and compete with a Gaius instead of a Leora. As you can see the, the highest Gaius team is around let's see here it's probably somewhere somewhere here yeah this is probably the highest team 12 turns and it's not even cracking top 30. He's affected the most in this type of uh, content which not just him but other units can also be affected by this kinds of thing the next content is going to be desolate lands this is a content that he still holds up, he still holds up because there is no turn limit right so if the content has no turn limit then he is still the best or one of the best options that you can run because he has 100% crit rate you don't need any crit rate that's a lot of stats that you can pump into uh, speed and attack and crit damage so that way he becomes an insanely good DPS um, especially in like this desolate, con desolate land bosses where you can't debuff the boss so Yunshuan is not going to steal the spotlight or anything so Gaius is the best um, second best DP DPS that you can get that doesn't need to apply debuffs on the boss in order to do his damage if Yunshuan is able to run in um, desolate land then he's going to steal Gaius' spotlight but this is a content that you can't really do debuff the boss you need raw damage and Gaius provides you with that raw damage and there's no turn limit like I said the the only problem with like Gaius is that he eats up too much turns in order to get his nuke out he, he eats up one whole turn in order to transform and then does his nuke right so that's why he's been out of like the competition when it comes to leaderboard contents that is centered around turn limit like the ritual miracle like i just showed you and then even in the trials the uh you know lian's trial he's not really that used all that much because once again he transforms eats a turn and then you know and also because of the trials you can debuff the boss so yun chuan is always going to steal the spotlight from Gaius. celestial anomaly is also an area that he doesn't really shine all that much once again because of turn limit so that's how like characters in not just dislike but in all of gacha games that they can face out of meta even though nothing nothing about them changed but the game changed like even as broken as um shuen pin is she can also be phased out of the meta if dislike decides to go uh, in the direction where time limit 
is a thing instead of turn count because regarding Xuan Pin, she um, she doesn't eat up a lot of turns because assist does not eat up the turns it's just an additional attack during um, whatever point of attack that she does right so whenever she attacks she calls a random ally to assist with 100% chance that one doesn't take a turn but it takes up a lot of times it is the same problem with uh, Brewster in that um, Brewster teams he, Brewster even though he's a god of turn count contents he falls short when it comes to time limit when it comes to time limit Brewster and Xuan Pin eats up a lot of time because of the pursuits that they they provide or they do like for example my 19 APAP team that revolves around Brewster can go up to like 48 to 50 seconds even though it's 9 turns it has the same speed of clearance with like a 15 to 16 turns it has 9 turns but yeah because of the all the pursuits it's not fast in terms of time limit um, and yeah as you can see Gaius is still one of the best um, options actually he is the best for, uh, option for uh, this uh, shadow fire Gaius Gaius actually Chloe is being subbed out because Gaius is still a better wave clearer than Chloe so he still remains in shadow fire here we go Gaius Gaius but then Tever R6 makes a debut in uh, shadow fire Gaius again Ooh, this one has Valeria interesting and then Gaius Gaius so he's still the king of like desolate lands where turn limit is not really a thing another area that he's good in is um, shadow stream this one not really for wave clearing or anything but he still holds up to be one of the best unit for single target dps when you can't debuff the boss it's just era providing him with the brisingerman watch and then making him take as many turns as possible Anki Chai is here to reduce his cooldown because um, his AI got changed in one previous update. I don't, I don't know when was it. It's quite a long time ago. But if he has his S2 up, he will nuke before transforming. So uh, previously, before that update, he would transform transform no matter what. Even though he has his nuke up, he will still transform, which sort of wasted his uh, um, nuke there you go as you can see he nuked before he trans transforms with this change it has made him a lot more viable as a single target DPS so it's not like wasted when you cool down uh, decrease Gaius so that his uh, nuke is a lot more faster so right here if he can get like a few cooldown resets on his uh, S2 he will nuke first before transforming this is a content that does not revolve around turn limit or turn count so Gaius is still going to hold up unlike Kronos or whatever that he falls short falls short in solely because of the turn count because Leora is just so much better than him at wave clearing which indirectly pushes him out to be out of meta when it comes to Kronos okay this one we got a little bit unlucky we didn't get times 18 but it's okay, it's still gonna be pretty good score around 16 maybe million if I can get lucky. Yeah, he, he nuked first before transforming, which is very good. So now he essentially nukes. His nuke is basically like two turns because right now he's going to transform and then do, does his uh, thing. And then next turn he's going to transform again and then nuke. So his nuke uptime is a lot more bet better. Boom, there we go. So if we can get a few resets on him, boom, that's one reset. And then if Ira can put her Brissingerman watch on him and then reset his uh, nuke even more, he's going to get it up in this turn, possibly. I think this turn he's going to get it up. Yeah, see? He does a double nuke within one transformation. So yeah, not a bad score. Uh, 16 million, if we can get times 18 right there, it would have been 18 something million. Yeah, guys, the damage is still a lot, doing about 50% of the damage, almost as much as uh, Li Guang. So yeah, when we take a look at the leaderboard, there is still Gaius team in the top 10, because once again, it is not a turn base limit or turn base content. Okay, so the top 4 is not using Gaius instead of using 
it's still it's using R6 Mateo. Actually, no, top five. Okay, so Gaia's team is around rank eight, which is still not bad because this all of these teams are using R6 Tever, but which obviously is a lot better than Gaia's. But you know, Gaia's rank eight, rank nine, not bad. So yeah, he still holds up here. Next content is going to be the Celestial Anomaly. Um, we can't really see the Phase 1 teams, but we can see the Phase 2 and Phase 3. But yeah, same issue. It's a turn-based uh, content, so Gaius is going to fall short. As you can see, there's no Gaius seen in any of this. Even though the boss has um, multiple minions that Gaius can um, pop off, because he is a very good AoE DPS unit, but still, no guy is to be seen at all in any of the Celestial Anomaly phases because, once again, he takes up a lot of turns which just shoots him down when it comes to options that you want to use, right? As you can see, no, no guy is to be seen in any of this uh, player's team in Phase 2. Then if you go to Phase 3, even still, there's no guy is to be seen. Um, yeah, just not even a single Gaius, just for the mere fact that he is eating up too many turns in order to clear the wave or even do damage. That one turn of transformation is wasted because you only have 120 turns in this um, content to dish out as much damage as you possibly can, which is why, once again, Gaius just doesn't uh, make the cut for anyone's team really like top t top 20 not a single person is using Gaius in phase 2 and phase 3 and even in this like uh, Scorch Messenger Void and Wither he was only used in the Wither Messenger because of that cheese threat by extending the debuffs um, of the boss so that you can nuke with uh, Oli and you day but aside from that these two he's not really used you can use him but within between the boss stages but you can really just use anyone at that point and he's not really used in the boss stages because he doesn't really offer much he eats up too many turns and that just shoots him down all right that's about it for pve let's check out gaius in pvp okay so for pvp for gaius he suffers with the typing syndrome because Okay, the, the thing is, every unit in the game is going to have like type disadvantage, right? But w when you are type disadvantage against one of the most threatening unit in, in like defense, which is height, then uh, your type disadvantage is not really, is more detrimental to you than any other unit can be. Because, for example, if you miss, okay, this is a perfect team to showcase Gaius. If you miss a crit onto height, using a Gaius and you don't kill the height to proc his first life then that height can essentially solo you and Ahmed and height can solo your entire team when you uh, miss on for example you miss on Sally by using Narmer for example Sally and TA maybe it's not going to solo your entire team but height and Ahmed is going to solo your, your entire team if you run a cleave and you don't kill them I'm not going to bring uh, Gabriel and Changji because it's going to cleave this team but this is going to showcase Gaius if he misses the crit onto height and he doesn't kill then the team can fail because of that and um, that's going to be when you miss on Gaius it's going to be more detrimental to you than you miss on let's say for example a um, Sally like I said right let's see if he misses there's three type disadvantage right here for Gaius so he's most likely going to fail. He's probably not going to crit uh, Ahmed and Hyde, which is going to be the downfall. Okay, he didn't. He, he did crit Gaius or uh, Hyde, but he didn't crit on Ahmed. That could also be a problem. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Camille just did uh just basically killed everyone off, but we we managed to succeed because he crit on the Hyde. And you don't really want to bank on the fact that you crit on height. You want to have your offense team as high win rate as you possibly can get because you can't really control what your defense team do. Um, unless you're a will and you can put like R6 everything and then 
it's going to be difficult for people to tackle your team, right? Okay, I'm, I'm going to try out this team once again. This team doesn't have an armor, so it's not really that uh, threatening. Hide without an without an armor is not going to solo, most likely because lack of heal and lack of stacks is going to make him uh, not that strong. So let's see here. Does he create the hide? Boom! Yeah, there we go. He he didn't create the hide. So I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm not gonna finish this match. Actually, no. I'm I'm gonna showcase. This is probably gonna never mind. Okay, I'm not gonna finish this match because right there, I'm just going to show you that Gaius, when he misses the crit onto Hyde, is going to be more detrimental for you than, um, like for example, my Narmer not critting the um, Sally and then critting the Hyde. All right, let's check out this team. This time, I'm gonna be bringing uh, Narmer. So I'm gonna showcase that critting on Hyde is more important than critting on. Uh, Sally for example because Sally is not going to solo your entire team whereas Hyde can potentially solo your entire team and he uh, Most of the time will if you bring a Gaius and Gaius misses on Hyde and doesn't kill his first life so right here the the premise of this team is just to kill off uh, What's it called? Uh, Hyde for to take to take away his first life Guaranteed right here. He probably might not okay. We didn't uh, kill him off, but Camille will if uh, will do a double hit and then take away his first life. So that's more important than um, killing a Sally, because if you bring a Gaius, he's not he has a fifty percent chance to miss on the height, and fifty percent of the time you won't kill the Gaius and take his first life. But yeah, against like a height and. Gaius comp, you really don't want to bring a Gaius and instead use either even a Liling or an armor in order to guarantee that you crit on height and take away his first life. If you don't take away his first life, then a cleave team versus a 50 stack height with the second life up, you're probably going to lose. So against this type of teams, Gaius is going to pop off because he has no type disadvantage and most importantly, there is no height. If you miss against like Armit, it doesn't really matter when there's no height because there's no potential one, uh, one unit soloing your entire team. But if there is a height, then Gaius just becomes even more unreliable. Right, I can't really find any Ars, uh, height teams. This is the first one, but it has low resonance on Abigail, but we have no choice. The height teams with Armit is all running like Cecilia, so I can't really go against that team. Using a cleave team is 100% going to lose. Let's showcase once again Gaius against Ahmed and Hyde, and we'll see that not creating on Hyde is very de detrimental for a cleave team because when you leave Hyde with his second life up, you can still get clapped. Okay, he doesn't counter for him for some reason. So okay, we did create on the Hyde, but not the Ahmed, and we can still get clapped right here. Okay, never mind. We won because we crit on the height, took his second life, and basically just, you know, the, the enemies didn't get like any counter procs. But once again, you don't really want to bring Gaius against a height. But yeah, that's it for Point War. And lastly, let's showcase him in Hollow Battle, and then we'll, uh, we'll end it off with that. Gaius is still going to be a king in Hollow Battle because the nature of it, there's only three en three enemies, and Gaius does five lightning shots, which can go, you know, five hits onto three enemies is going to do a lot of damage. So let's so showcase him in this. He's not really that good in defense because when you use him in defense, um, the enemy can just pick a height and then you're pretty much screwed. So yeah, Gaius right here, no surprise, he's still like insanely good for hollow battle offense because three enemies five lightning boom okay we didn't we didn't kill anyone <laughs> which is a problem um but i think we're still fine though maybe not i think i'm screwed right here yeah i'm kind of screwed right here. <laughs> my guy is a bit too fast so he does like no damage so we're kind of screwed right here but you know i should have picked a better defense against this yeah, we're still fine. 
So he's still really good in in like hollow battles if because in hollow ba hollow battle defense or offense you can pick what you want to fight. So he just accelerates your ticket because of how how good his uh single target damage is, right? So boom, there we go. Even though we didn't manage to kill the enemies off, we still managed to win. Not bad, right? This is probably another showcase that Gaius is going to pop off because. Once again, if I outspeed him, we basically just instantly win. He's going to nuke pretty much everyone. If not everyone, then uh, Clara. Okay, yeah, everyone is there except for Gaius, so GG. Alright, last battle with Gaius. Once again, he's running a speedy comp, so Gaius is just going to kill him off right here. And boom. Okay, never mind. Boom. And that's it for Hollow Battle. So what's the verdict? Is he still worth it to spend 100 wish stones? 100% he is still really good in PvP. With the speed meta running around, people have used Hide and Ahmed less and less which has made him even more viable now um, than before. So Gaius has made a resurgence in PvP. So 100 wish stones for him is still, I would say, very well worth it he's still considered one of the best units in the game and i believe so as well in rta he's going to be a monster still but yeah that's about it ciao